rather unusual, to say the least. The experiences that are being shared uh, <coughs> is valuable, to say the least. This is so very interesting. I'm Brother Anthony John Sloan. Yes, I'm your brother from the exact same great 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 grandmother African grandmother There's a lot of connections here. It's very interesting. I've been traveling the world. Let me start by this because the uh the Corbin spoke first. Oh, she just spoke last, I should say. Um, I'm a veteran of the United States Air Force. I was a medic in the United States Air Force. In the Vietnam era. Never went to Vietnam. If I did, they would have to put me in air conditioning tank because of the lab technician. You should know what that means. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, also, uh, I, uh, I'm a radio person and a communicator. And uh, my job, when 9-11 happened, I was the engineer for Democracy Now, a program called Democracy Now. We were down there in the actual area. And my radio station at the time was at 120 Wall Street. But even as that happened, uh, that same night that it happened, I had to go to the radio station. It was very eerie to see the lights and the, the twisted things. It, it really didn't look like a movie set. Um, I wanted to read, I have, a, I have a couple of poems I wanted to read. I'm gonna have to, uh, almost full golden in a, in a certain way, but I want to say a little bit of something, have a, if I read this last one, I'm not really sure. But let me tell you a few things. I live in, I, I said, yes I do, I live in South Africa right now. And I live in a rural area. I live in a village. Um, so you know, everybody goes to Joburg to Cape Town, but I live in a place called Etikani, uh, that's, a, that's the, uh, the, the native pronunciation, which is called Alice. It has a university there. Uh, one of the people that went through that university is a man named Mangalusa Rapa Sabupa. Oh, actually, for some strange reason, I actually have <laughs> to take it. This is Mangalusa Rapa Sabupa. Here's an image of him. He says, remember Africa. He's a Christian. Uh, he's the one that started, that started the whole thing with the Sharpeville with the past, when the past um, were, were burnt. And when they put him in Robben Island, uh, Unlike Mediba, where he talked to the guard, they had him in isolation. The guards couldn't even talk to him. He was just that uh, a, a feared a figure in South Africa. In fact, the young people that I work with, they they don't look at Bishop Tutu or Mediba. They look at Chris Hani. They look at Mangalisa Robert Sabuka. Because for them, the struggle is not over. Even even when I first started talking to them, I said, Levy, if, even if you finish the struggle, there's other people in the world. Look at the look, look at the the Dakota Nation. Look at the American Indians. They have it worse than you. You don't believe it because they're in America. So even now, it's, it's like a, there's a there was a woman uh, during the Civil Rights era named uh, Ella Josephine Baker, and uh, she had this famous saying. Everybody knows it, but maybe you don't know it. We <coughs> who believe in freedom cannot rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. Now my own uh, lineage, if you will, I come from uh, the Black Arts Movement, you know, the whole Black Power struggle, and all that stuff. And right now, you see, this is this this top is actually made by my wife. She's a South African. She's a very talented uh, young designer, like that. But this is a this is original. This is a this is, people think it's a dashiki. Well, it's a dashiki for the shirt. That's what it is. And I have a hat. Everybody said, "Well, that's not, isn't that 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 communist hat?" Well, for some people, this one I'm saying, for perception, some people, it might be, it might be, you know, Chinese, it might be, maybe, you know, made, made famous by Che Guevara. I studied Che Guevara during the Black Arts Movement, the you know, Black Power Movement, and Che and Fanon, and, you know, Nkrumah, all those people like that. But for me, it's something else. It comes from, I'm so, so, so sorry, the, the, the Nigerian brother isn't here. It comes from, in the Nigerian culture, the Yoruba culture, I'm what's called a child of Ogun. And Ogun's colors are right. green. Well, I'm sorry. Ogun's colors in Nigeria is basically blue. As, 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 as a religion, as a culture goes through Brazil, is blue and white. When it comes to North America, due to, Chris, due, due to Cuban strain, it's actually, uh, well, green, black, with a little bit of red. So this is actually my Ogun cap. 
Now, who is Ogun? Ogun, in the European pantheon, is the, uh, the Orisha, meaning just a, 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 the selected head of war. That's what people think. You, the, the, when you think of iron, you see the guy in the grass skirt and the, uh, and the, and the machete, whatever have you, you say, oh, that's war. Well, he's actually iron. So what he also is, he's, the, he's in charge of like a healing. That's where your surgical instruments come from. So I'm trying to say is every time you do something, every, you are more than what you are. You are more than what people perceive you to be. There's this whole word that I heard. I hear it all the time because I'm also hanging out in the NGO section sector. And I, I have to tell you right now, I can't stand this word. The word is empowerment. I'm empowered. I got empowered. Yeah, I want to be empowered. <laughs> well, when I deal with the young people I work with, I said, I can't empower you. I can't give you anything. I'm not, I can't, it's impossible. Because you, you'd have to go, you have no idea what my life has been. I've been all over the world, believe me. I've lived with vampire bats. I lived in the jungles. I lived a lot of places. I've been places that people don't normally go without any money, I should say. I said, but what I do is I try to make a safe space around you. This sanctuary is a safe space. And in this safe space, when people talk to you, and they might excite something in you, they might trigger something in you. I don't like that word either. But anyway, trigger something in you. And what happens, I give them a chance to release. In other words, everything that you have, everything that, that you think God has given you, it's given to you already before you came here. I actually believe that you chose to be on through the circumstances that you've done been to be here. And what happens is when you release, you're actually releasing, you're releasing the magnificence within you, the magnificence that is, if you want to say God, the universe, whoever have you. So with that said, I'm just going to give you a, 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 a poem. I'm going to read that one. It's just, just one poem. I wrote this this morning, by the way. A, a, a genius friend of mine, his name is uh, Grayson. I think Grayson is a biblical name, too. I'm not really sure. You Christians know that. I'm not a Christian. I'm a, I'm a deist. But don't worry. That means I studied a lot of different things, and I come to the belief that, oh, yeah, I, don't, I can go through Christ to understand stuff. I can go through the Muhammad. Understand. I can go through Buddha, whatever. But I go straight to God. So every morning, I pray to God, and I don't pray like you pray. In words, I don't use words. Because to me, that's petitioning God. Well, I don't need to petition God. God knows what I want. So I pray to him in a language that you don't understand that I don't understand. And then every as I walk through the day, because what you're supposed to do is keep God conscious with you every, every, every step that you take. As I walk through the day, something good happens, something that is maybe you might think is bad, but alters my path. I, I honored the two, the, 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 the uh, the European tradition as well as the Catholic tradition I grew up in. So I say, thank God, pray the Lofi. That's all. Every step I, I, I may mumble it, sometimes I say it out loud, but usually I keep it quiet because people are not going to understand, they think I'm crazy. So thank God, pray the Lofi. So thank God, pray the Lofi that you are here to hear this poem. Now Grayson, who is a genius, some people think he's crazy, but he's a genius. He said something to me last night. That stuck to me the entire night. I'm sorry, yesterday morning. It stuck to me the entire day. And his words, instead of naming the poem, what he, he said, vessels for ghosts. He said, vessels for ghosts. That's what he was saying. He was talking about this, the state that we're in, vessels for ghosts. So I wrote this poem. It's short. It says, a, a, and I, I said, saying Grace, and I said, a Gracian statement. A challenge. By the way, before I start, let me say something. I'm not really a poet. I'm perpetrating a fraud. A poet, somebody like Henry Dumas. I'm a wordsmith. I like to see stuff on pages. That's all. And I can't really read that well. So just bear with me, and you can fill it. You see, got all these, these punctuations. I just like the way it looks. <laughs> a grace, a grace young statement. A challenge. Known for what you are, foe to friendship. What you have always been, discarding of humanities, of the too many guardians crushed upon your waves. Just a tool, your kit 
of everlasting conquest, even as they submit and pray, you conquered in prayer. The thee of day has this day uncursed you, foe to friendship? Permission is yours. You can now cease voyaging vessel for ghosts. That's the poem. Let me just interpret it for you just a little bit because I know I can sit on my words. It's very simple. If Megali Sir Robert Sabukwe has said, Africa is for humanity. You have to be human to be in Africa. I just take it as this. Well, if you're not into humanity, then get off the continent. So what you're doing here for Sierra Leone, that's because you have a humanity <coughs> that you're trying that, that, you're, that, that you're, you're using your humanity in the humanities in the humanity situation. If you come to Africa to exploit, you know, to take to, to take those materials and make a gun to come back, and then keep on taking from it, well, that's not humane. Okay, so this poem basically says, look, you can uncurse yourself. Only you can uncurse yourself. If you have a mentality, a mentality. Not a skin color, but a mentality that continues to prey upon people, even as they pray. And what you need to do to uncurse yourself is alter that mentality. That's it. Change your mentality. And when you change your mentality, you'll find that you will then open yourself. You will be, re re you will be released. You will be released. It's a joyful thing to be released. And be you. Thank you so very much.